Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight or quick hit video on a Spirit of Dubai fragrance that was very kindly sent to me by one of my brothers in the community. Uh, Paolo sent me this generous decant of a fragrance called Diwan. Now, um, Diwan is from the second generation and this is actually the very first fragrance from the second generation that I will be talking about on the channel. Uh, if you have been following the channel for a long time, you know that I actually went through the entire sample set of the first generation of Spirit of Dubai fragrances. And so I've got videos on every single one of these fragrances. If you're interested in learning more about kind of what my thoughts are, feel free to check those out. There's an entire playlist that I basically did dedicated to the, the house, and I will be adding this one to it as well. So um, these late night insight videos are sort of um, meant to be just kind of quick snapshots of my thoughts. And you know my videos are never quick, so it'll probably end up being over half an hour, but just kind of a high level overview, if you will, because remember, this is all I have is just a little decant. I don't have a full bottle. I don't have a year of experience wearing it as my scent of the day or anything like that. Um, but um, I have sniffed enough fragrances where, you know, this um, this channel is kind of about following my journey and about giving my two cents on, on what's out there and documenting the way that I feel. So I have to be brutally honest right, right out of the gate. The very first thing that hit me at, when I smelled this is I've smelled it before. And not only have I smelled it before, but I've smelled it before with Spirit of Dubai. Um, it smells very similar to one of their fragrances that I actually really liked. And I said that I was going to, if I was going to buy a full bottle of from the first generation, this would be one of the fragrances that I would buy. And this was called Majalis. And so if you smelled Majalis, uh, you'll kind of have an idea of the ballpark that we're in as far as Diwan goes. Uh, because Diwan has a very similar scent profile. And in fact, when you first spray uh, the first 10 to 15 minutes, I actually had problems picking the two apart um, from memory. I, I didn't do a comparison or anything like that on skin while I was wearing D1. But from memory, I was like, man, this is a very similar opening to something I've smelled from uh, Majalis or maybe even the other one that you could mention is Taroth. Taroth is, um, is, is the other fragrance that I thought smelled hauntingly similar um, in the first 10 to 15 minutes. And, you know, when you spend $1,000 a bottle, which is basically what this is, uh, D1 is 1095 US dollars, not counting tax or anything like that, uh, for 90 mils. So the bottles are works of art, obviously, but uh, what real fragrance lover buys a perfume for the bottle? Um, you know, most people want the juice, which is exactly where I'm at. And so the first 15 minutes, I was a little bit disappointed. Um, and, you know, it almost smells like a little bit of a blend of many of the other Spirit of Dubai fragrances that you've smelled. Also, I will tell you that I've been on a little bit of an oud kick today. And the reason that I wanted to test D1 is that there is an oud note in here. And if you followed my Spirit of Dubai videos, you know that I really, really enjoyed their Oud fragrance the, from the first collection, just the Spirit of Dubai Oud. I think this is one of the stronger fragrances from the first collection. And the reason I started with the Oud is that I wanted to get a feel for the quality of Oud that they were using. And I figured that I would get the same quality of oud in all of the subsequent other fragrances that used oud. But as it turned out, that was not the case with Spirit of Dubai. In fact, I was very disappointed, I would almost say, with the quality of oud uh, when I smelled things like fahama or when I smelled things like... Um, uh, what was the leather one? The leather one was called... Um, oh, sorry, let me just pull it out here. The leather one was called uh, Maidan. So when I smelled Maidan, I was really disappointed with the um, with the 
quality of the oud in here, you know, the quality of the oud in here smelled almost designer level. You know, it, it's not what you would expect from a, a $500 to $1,000 fragrance. It's just not. And, um, and, and whenever we got around, once I got to the point in the sample set where I came across Majalis, if you watch my video, uh, on Majalis, you'll, you'll, you'll hear me say that I kind of smelled this without knowing anything about the price because I was just going through the sample set and I was saying, wow, this is the one that feels like they're using a higher quality oud. And then I got to the price tag and I realized that this was actually higher priced than some of the other ones like Maidan or um, Fahama that were not as high priced. And, and it feels like, um, you know, it feels like you are getting a, a higher quality oud there. So D1 almost feels like a uh, second generation version of Majalis to me. The opening with almost like a floral, almost like you ever heard the term floriental? So this floral, oriental, uh, but imagine that you're doing a Middle Eastern style floriental, okay? So there's a lot of notes like, for example, you get things like in the opening, you get uh, raspberry, uh, a million, there's a lot of fruits in here, which we'll talk about. There's spices, there's frankincense, there's rose, there's different types of rose. There's Bulgarian rose and carnation and taif rose and powdery notes and uh, earthy notes and iris and honey and vanilla and guarjum balsam and, and cedarwood and coffee. There's just a million notes in this fragrance. There's 44 notes. I'll go through them all if you guys want. Um, but it basically turns into this spirit of Dubai um, you know, oriental style fragrance that tends to shine through. And if you've smelled some of the other Spirit of Dubai's, you could almost maybe even guess that this was a Spirit of Dubai fragrance. Um, if I was on a blind sniff, it would be very curious to see if I could say this is a Spirit of Dubai. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I was able to guess that this actually was a Spirit of Dubai fragrance. And and I don't say that in a good way necessarily. The fact that I can pick out that this is a Spirit of Dubai fragrance um, because the DNA is so similar. You might think it's it's not necessarily a bad thing, but the way that I'm saying it almost makes it a bad thing. Like you're paying over $1,000 a bottle and it almost smells uh, like a clone of something they've done before. And that's very disappointing, I must admit, especially at this price tag. It almost feels like they try and throw 44 notes at you, kind of like Roja does. You know, they throw all these notes at you to, um, to you know, make people think it's so luxurious and justify the price tag. Um, but I, I would, I would demand a little bit more from this, from, from the opening. And some people say, I mean, you have to discuss the fragrance without discussing the price tag. That. Um, uh, you know, that the price shouldn't come into your your thoughts on the fragrance itself. You should be blinded to the price. And while I understand what they're saying in that mindset, I also feel like when you're spending over $1,000 for 90 mil, I would almost demand, I mean, not just ask, but demand more. And And the reason I demand more is because now, you know, this is not 2007 when Tom Ford's Oudwood launched. This is not 2002 when M7 launched. Um, you know, this is uh, not 2010 11 when Cree's Royal Oud launched. This is a new world of Oud now. And today, as my scent of the day, and I actually did a video on this as well, I wore Ensar's Tiger Lust. And for this price tag, you know, for a thousand dollars and for a thousand ninety five USD, I could get a 50 mil uh, pure parfum of Tiger Lust, which absolutely smokes, absolutely smokes Spirit of Dubai. I mean, it puts Spirit of Dubai in the rear view mirror, puts it in the, in the, you know, um, it puts it in the corner crying. And you could get Russian Adams' new limited edition um, perfumes, his ouds that are coming out, the History of Oud collection. I would much rather, much rather spend this kind of money on these type of oud fragrances where you actually are getting the real deal, um, you know, and I'm not saying that Spirit of Dubai isn't using real oud, because I'm sure at this price tag, they absolutely better be, but it doesn't smell like they're using real oud. It smells almost designer-ish in, in a way. Um, now, saying all of that, okay, that's, that's one piece of the puzzle here with this fragrance. Put that aside for a second. 
because I'm not saying I don't like the fragrance. Actually, uh, I do like the fragrance, and if I own this, I would absolutely wear it. But um, for a thousand USD, this fragrance better shake heaven and earth when you wear it. And it doesn't do that. It doesn't compete with the Ensars. It doesn't compete with the Bortnikovs. It doesn't compete with the uh, Arige Le Dore's. It doesn't compete with the Rising Phoenixes. And that is a problem. You know, when you're a Middle Eastern house based on, uh, you know, oud and rose and spices and, and Middle Eastern style flair, uh, you, you have to know where you fall in that price tag. And they're going, I understand, they're going for the ultra high end luxury niche market where some guy walks into the Dubai mall and he could buy the entire collection and drop 25 G's on his credit card and not bat an eye. I understand they're going for that market. Um, but there's also us regular perfume lovers out there, right? And, um, you know, and, and these are the, 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 the uh, perfume lovers that are not in that situation to just go drop a bunch of money on, on all of the perfumes and not bat an eye, you're going to be more discerning. You're going to kind of break the fragrance down. You're going to want to, um, uh, you're going to want to almost act like a sniper and pick the one that fits you best. Um, because you don't, you can't go blow that kind of money. Most people can't. Um, and so that's where I hope these videos can kind of help, uh, hone in on what, what exactly is, is worth it and, and, and how much to spend on each fragrance, because I think this is vastly overpriced. It's a good fragrance. I enjoy it but I think it's vastly overpriced. Um, so here's the thing. My initial impressions is on, on the original ones, like I said, I felt like they kind of cheaped out a little bit on the Oud note here. Uh, do I feel like they cheaped out on the Oud note in Diwan? Mm, sort of. I mean, it doesn't seem, because you have to remember, Majalis was kind of the more expensive uh, release from the line. So Majalis was the one that was like 795 USD or something, whereas the rest were 500 or, or 495 or something like that. Uh, I don't remember exactly the, the price breakdown, but I remember Majalis being more. Now we're taking another step up. We're going from 795 or whatever it is to $1,095. Is there a step, an increase in the quality of the ingredients to D1? Or is it just a, a different bottle? Because it almost seems like you're paying the extra money for the cool looking bottle that you get. Um, and so is there a step up in quality over Majalis? Not really, to be honest with you. In fact, I might even take Majalis. Um, but let's get into the smell a little bit because I've just been talking kind of around the periphery of the fragrance. So the good thing that ends up showing itself is 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 this. So I told you it can't compete with Ensar or Arige La Dore, but you have to compare this almost to a designer level fragrance. I know that's crazy to say when we're talking about a thousand dollar perfume, but but you have to. You have to compare it to the um, Frederick Malls of the world, let's say. The Moon, The Night, Dawn, those are the kind of um, fragrances that this is going to compete with. Um, the designer ouds, if you will. The western ouds. And um, so the first 10 to 15 minutes is the biggest letdown because if you've smelled other Spirit of Dubai fragrances, that's where you're going to get that scent memory association. There's this, um, you know, I don't know if it's just uh, the fact that the oil house synthetics that they're using in here um, will remind you of the other fragrance. Some, some I saw, there's very little information on this, by the way, on the internet. There's like one review online or something, and it's really not very in detail at all. Um, but one thing that I did hear one of the people say is that this doesn't smell synthetic at all. And that's a complete just crock to me because this smells like a load of synthetics, a load of amber woods. And I'm not an amber wood hater, I will tell you that. Uh, I have no problem with the modern synthetics as long as they're used uh, properly. You know, there's a certain way to do things and a certain way not to do things. And, um, this particular fragrance, uh, feels like the synthetics that are used remind you of what you've smelled in the other Spirit of Dubai offerings. So once you put that aside though, okay, and once you say, okay, the first 15 minutes or so passes, that's where the fragrance starts to slowly win me over, slowly win me over. Because what ends up coming to the forefront between 
somewhere between the 30 minute to the one hour mark on this fragrance is where I think you really start to get uh, the star of this fragrance of D1. The star to me is the uh, frankincense. So you basically begin to get um, whiffs of this very beautiful um, incense that starts to emerge. And what ends up happening between 30 minutes to an hour is it begins to mix with fruits. So you start to get things like dewberry come to the forefront. You start to get raspberry. You start to get apple, peach, plum, and strawberry. And if it sounds like a fruit smoothie, uh, it feels a little bit like a fruit smoothie because there's this oriental, you know, underneath it all, there's this ambery um, spirit of Dubai blend, as I called it. Whenever I reviewed uh, Tiger Lust today, I said that uh, Ensar has a specific like ambergris DNA. The Ensar ambergris is what I'm calling it. Spirit of Dubai has like a spirit of Dubai oriental. And, um, you know, if you've smelled things like, uh, for example, if you've smelled Roja's Middle Eastern line. So this is um, a vintage bottle of Oman, uh, Sultanate of Oman by Roja. If you smelled this Middle Eastern line, you'll know that there's this sort of uh, DNA that you smell um, that's very similar between the line. So even though United Arab Emirates smells different from Kuwait, which smells different from, um, you know, Oman, which smells different from Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, which smells different from Bahrain, so forth and so on, they all have this um, DNA that kind of reminds you of each other. And actually, if I was trying to make a comparison between the way that the Spirited Dubai fragrances all kind of join at the hip, Roja's Middle Eastern line is actually probably one of the best comparisons that I could make because um, I like both, I like both, um, you know, lines. I think that they're both good. I think they both have some winners in them, but I also think they're vastly overpriced. And I think that, um, you know, there's some sort of uh, overall sort of uh, DNA that they start with and then they just change a couple things here and there and bam, here's a new $500 release. They change a couple things here and there bam, here's a different $500 release, you know. They put a new name on it, bam, here's another $600 release. And that's kind of what it feels like um, with, with, some of these, with some of these releases from Roja's Middle Eastern line and Spirit of Dubai's line. That's probably the best comparison. Or, or Frederick Mall's uh, Middle Eastern line. Also, there's some comparison there, I would say, between the moon, because the moon has this sort of, um, you know, let's say hookah, raspberry like smell smoky hookah raspberry and you get a little bit of that in uh, D1 I would say there is a little bit of this fruity um, you know frankincense that gives off this uh, bachor which is kind of um, what they use to perfume themselves in the Middle East They'll actually stand over the bachor and let the smoke kind of um, pour into their clothes and then once the smoke starts coming out of their uh, you know out of the top of their of their outfit, if you will, that's when you know that they're basically perfumed. I've never done it, but um, uh, apparently it uh, is extremely powerful. And um, so imagine this bachor smoke or like this hookah smoke, let's say, but scented with fruits. All of those fruits I mentioned earlier: the apple, the raspberry, the dewberry, the peach, the plum, the strawberry. The strawberry note is beautiful in here. I'll tell. I will say that. Very few strawberry notes are done this good. It's a beautiful strawberry note. Um, it also opens up with some slight citruses like grapefruit and, and there's a little bit of this aldehydic opening that before you just dive headfirst into this uh, spirit of Dubai Oriental as I'm calling it. But once the uh, half an hour to an hour mark comes through and you get that oud and frankincense and patchouli and you know some of those notes starting to kind of show themselves that's when the fragrance really starts to win me over. There's a little bit of old school um, carnation here, and what it all starts to blend with, to my nose, is this Cipriol note. And I've done an entire video on Cipriol. You can go check it out if you're interested in learning more about what Cipriol is, or Nagamatha oil. Um, but it's a note that's used very commonly by houses that want to kind of uh, give this oud DNA, right? Without really using oud. 
Um, and so I'm not saying that there is or is not real oud in here because there probably is a little bit of real oud in, in D1. I would certainly hope so for 1,095 USD. But the note that I get most to my nose is almost this Cypriol-like accord, this earthy sort of uh, Cypriol note. Again, go check out my video if you want to learn more about Cypriol. It's under my This Is Not A Top 10. Um, I've got an entire playlist dedicated to that where we focus specifically on notes and perfumery. And um, if you've smelled something like Frederick Mall's Promise, you'll get a great idea of what Cypriol smells like. Another great Cypriol fragrance, if you're interested, is this. This was done by Pierre Nagrin and um, Alberto Morias, and this is Journeyman by Amouage. This is a beautiful Sichuan pepper, tobacco, uh, Cypriol fragrance, cinnamon, um, beautiful wintery cold weather fragrance, but uh, I think you can wear it anytime, but uh, I, I absolutely adore Journeyman. And, um, you know, but if you want to learn a little bit about Cypriol, this or Frederick Mall's Promise, would be two that I can just name off the top of my head. But, um, you know, there. so imagine you have this frankincense, this incense, this bachor, this, um, um, you know, hookah-like smokiness coming through, and it's fruity. And so if you ever smoke like a fruity hookah, which is a great uh, enjoyment, by the way, back when I used to smoke, that was one of my, uh, I used to love to just, after a long day, put the coals on the hookah, Get out the apples, you know, green apple or, you know, whatever. Ro rose water was a beautiful hookah flavor to, to, to smoke and, and just, you know, relax and chill. And, um, and But it gives off a very specific aroma, right? And so imagine there's a little bit of that from the fruits in here. And it begins to blend with this sort of sour, oud, cypriol combination. And that's where... I think the fragrance really starts to kind of shine and, and come into its own. The first opening, when it really started to remind me of Majalis, and I liked, I really liked Majalis, but I was more disappointed with the fact that this is supposed to be a new release. You know, this is supposed to be in their second generation where everyone's telling me, oh, this is, you know, yes, the first generation, I understand what you're saying, but the second generation, Ramsey, oh, you've got to try the second generation. Well, here we are. Uh, and it didn't, it did really didn't blow me away, but it did slowly start to win me over because once that incense, frankincense blends with the fruitiness, that's where that oriental vibe, you start to get this, um, you know, the spices start to come into play more. You get a little bit more of the cardamom and the earthy notes and stuff like that. Um, there's a very beautiful peppery rose that starts to make itself known. There's this beautiful lemony, powdery taif rose that comes out as the fragrance dries further. Initially, you almost get this wet, um, almost this fruity Bulgarian rose, which almost smelled to my nose like there was this pear note. So there's this like incense pear, uh, this fruity rose, um, very honey-liked as well. The, 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 uh, rose that you smell initially gives off almost this honey-like smell, this uh, oriental honey-like vibe, but then as it dries down, uh, it turns into this greener, almost spicy geranium-like feel. There's no geranium note listed, I don't think. Ah, there is, actually. Yeah, I mean, there's a million notes. Here, I'll read them to you just for help, just for kicks and giggles. So the top is um, frankincense, Bulgarian rose, dewberry, Pink pepper, raspberry, rose, Turkish rose, aldehydes, green apple, cardamom, grapefruit, green leaves, orange, peach, plum, strawberry, and woody notes. Freaking woody notes. Heart notes of frankincense, oud, patchouli, powdery notes, powdery notes, saffron, sandalwood, amber, carnation, chamomile, cypriol, earthy notes, floral notes, geranium, iris, rhubarb, taif rose, vanilla, and honey with a base of frankincense, cedarwood, coffee, guarjum balsam, musk, sandalwood, ambergris, balsamic notes, benzoin, caramel, castorium, guyacwood, leather, myrrh, tonka bean, vanilla, and white musk. Uh, um, so, uh, just real quick, going back to the whole Ensar, Aris La Dore, Bortnikov thing, this perfume has real ambergris, okay? This perfume has real deer musk. Uh, this perfume has three real types of oot, and it, the list just goes on. I mean, um, the list of high-quality ingredients that you get here, um, 
you know, you think about the real Mysore sandalwood from the 70s, the Timor sandalwood that's used there. The um, deer, it feels like there's like this deer musk pod tincture that's used in Tiger Lust. And the reason I mention all that is because when I read this note listing and then I see freaking white musk in a $1,095 fragrance, it's just, it shows the, um, it shows the uh, segment of society that they're going for. You know, they're just going for someone that just has so much more money than sense. They're going for the people that have more money than sense. Because for $1,095, there shouldn't just be a cheap white musk node in this. Um, that's, that's my opinion. But there is. There is this um, sort of um, white musk note in the base. But um, a couple things that, that I will mention. So if you watched my video uh, on Majalis, you know that there was a couple things here that really I fell in love with. And the main thing was the note of Arabic coffee, or it's known as Kava. And Kava uh, is spelled Q-A-W-H-A, -A, Kava. And Kava's Arabic coffee because um, you ever seen the Arabic coffee they serve it to you in a very small sort of cup? And it's extremely strong because they don't give you very much liquid. And the reason they don't give very much liquid is because they live in a desert and coffee is a diuretic. It, it'll, it'll make you go to the bathroom. So if you drink a big giant, you know, cup of Starbucks coffee or something, you'll just be pissing out all of your, all of your fluids and you're in the desert. You need to, you need to preserve your fluids. So they give you a little tiny, you know, coffee cup. But I was raised around that smell because I was born in Jordan and, um, you know, my, uh, even to this day, when I go see my mom and dad, a lot of times my dad will make Arabic coffee with cardamom. It's, it's a very distinctive smell. And that coffee note was in Majalis. Okay. So it's one of the things that I really liked about, um, I really liked about Majalis was this sort of coffee smell that brought me back to, it brought me back to sort of, um, to the Middle East and, and Majalis is sort of like uh, in Arabic, I believe it means like a sitting room or maybe like a rug where you, um, where you would sit on, um, with company, that kind of thing, you know, and, um, this has that Arabic coffee accord in the base. And, um, the Arabic coffee accord is sort of chocolatey coffee, um, balsamic and ambery. And it's, it's really beautiful, really, um, you know, it has that cardamom coffee that I, I know so well. And um, so if you don't have the same experience that I do, you may not actually like this. You may not, um, uh, you may not be as sympathetic to the cause of, uh, of D1, especially if you have the experience that I have with the other Spirit of Dubai's or with other um, higher end fragrances. You may be a little disappointed in D1 which I am disappointed, but on the other hand, I like this DNA. Um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's overpriced by like a price of 10, not just, not just double, not just triple, not quadruple, but it's like 10 times overpriced what it should be. But, um, do I like the DNA? Yes. And, and the other thing that starts to come down, and I've worn this to bed one other time and you can see how much he gave me because I, this is the second time I've had a chance to wear it to bed and, and I still have uh, a pretty decent amount left. So thank you, my friend, for being so generous. Paolo, thank you very much. Um, but one thing that comes out in the dry down from memory, I don't really smell it yet because it's only been a couple hours since I've sprayed this. But as it continues to dry into hour five and six, which is as far as I ever got because I think I went to sleep after that last time, um, there's this leathery note that starts to come out. This sort of leather mixed with castorium and a little bit of myrrh and you know it's got that uh warm resinous uh leathery feel into the dry down and it's beautiful it's a it's a beautiful um dry down it doesn't seem like it lasts as long as it should though because into hour five and six as i was remembering from memory it feels like it was starting to get a little bit light already which for a 1095 pound fragrance you would expect this thing to last 24 hours like the vintage bottles of um for example the vintage bottles of um interlude man uh with the snap cap right this thing lasts 
24 hours. Um, that's the type of, that is the type of, um, you know, that's, that's the type of longevity and uh, power that you would expect from, from D1, but you don't get that. That's the thing, is it doesn't seem like it has those legs. I would love to test and just see how long it goes, but again, this is supposed to be an early impression video. We're already past half an hour, so um, I think you guys have a good idea of the scent. Is it unique? No. Uh, and this came out in whatever it was. The original Majalis came out in 2016, I think, which makes this release, D1, probably come out in 18, 19, if, if memory serves, maybe 2020. I'm not 100% sure, but... Um, Whenever it came out, is it unique? No. It definitely loses points on being so close to a previous Spirit of Dubai release. Um, would I buy this? Heck no. Absolutely not. Um, would I wear it? Yes, I absolutely would wear it. If, if I had a bottle, uh, I would wear it. But uh, I don't think it's worth the money that they're asking, and I think there's better Spirit of Dubais. Honestly, I would rather buy the... Um, I would rather buy the original Oud that they came out with. Oh, dropped it. Sorry. Oh, I'd rather buy the original Oud. Um, I thought that this competed with the Knight beautifully, and I don't own a bottle of the Knight, so something like this would be a great addition for me. But honestly, it's so hard to drop that kind of money on this type of fragrance when I can go get Russian Adams' new History of Oud collection. Uh, and uh, it just seems that's much, I would much rather spend my money there. So that's the problem that Spirit of Dubai has, you know, at least for someone like me where money is not unlimited. If you're some sort of a, you know, oil tycoon in the Middle East and you can just go to the mall and drop a hundred thousand dollars and in a trip and not bat an eye that, you know, you're that kind of person, go buy them all. Who cares? Collect them all. Do, treat it like a Pokemon, you know, got to collect them all. But for me, where money is limited and I have to allocate it in specific areas, uh, I would say uh, that D1 would be a pass for me. But it's been a pleasure getting to know it. Uh, thank you very much to my friend Paolo for sending it on. Thank you to everybody for watching. If you have experience with D1 or the second generation or even the first generation Spirit of Dubai's, I would love to hear your thoughts. So thanks everyone for watching. Before you go, like the video. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, cheers. Cheers very much. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.